We're gonna is get that going to be the one more thing? That is the one more thing. Okay, hold on. Yeah. Okay, I know, don't worry. I don't, don't. You oh did my. that to me. You one more thing to me. Why? <laughs> <laughs> and you're telling me to hold on. <laughs> don't is that your one more thing? Don't even go there. Oh, yeah, baby. We're back. We're going to be delirious once again by yeah. the end of this pod. It's 10.30 p.m. Sunday night. Week two is almost in the books. Just to give you a live look into Ahmed Farid, Chris Sims' life right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mac Jones just threw a bad pick driving down the field. Xavier Howard was all over Devontae Parker, and he just threw a fade ball up. Xavier Howard got it, and Miami then ended up going three and out, and they're going to punt backed up. But right now, <laughs> as we sit here, it's 17-3, yeah. to three, and I'm here with my man, Ahmed Farid. What up? And we have had a crazy weekend of college football. We had a long week, but we got to see all the football we needed on Sunday, and we are ready to Go. So it's funny. We did this last week yeah. for the first time ever. It yep. was the debut of it, and people liked it. People enjoyed it, having it for their morning commute. Although our overseas listeners reminded yeah. me, they go, well, it's not the you know, morning commute for some of us. <laughs> yeah, it's that's like right. nighttime that's commute right. for us halfway across <laughs> right. the world. Right. I was like, good note, good note. Um, <laughs> but I, there were some comments that people liked it so much, but they were worried that there's no way we could keep this up for a whole season. Where I, I, Everybody in my life is worried about that, <laughs> right? Everybody. Like my mom, my dad, my wife. Yeah. My agent, he didn't even realize I was doing it till last week, right? Because uh, I don't tell him. I'm sure. really just like, give me more money on my next contract, okay? <laughs> and so I told him, and he's like, oh, oh, Chris, uh, oh, what are you, you sure you can do that, Chris? Uh, you're going to get worn out. And I'm just like, oh, I'm yeah. through a f- it. We're going for it. That's yeah. just what you do. And we want to make sure the homies are feeling good on a Monday morning or the homies in Europe feel good on a Monday afternoon where they can listen to it. Exactly. Yes. Or Tuesday morning. I don't even know. Uh, yeah, yeah. Who knows? Sunday. Wherever Who knows you wherever are. You We're are. so worldly here <laughs> at the Unbutton Podcast. So, yeah, we'll go through every game here. That's a promise to you, the homies. We will keep you updated on this Sunday night football game. It's uh, just the fourth quarter is just starting at 17-3. to Here's the funny thing. You already know what happened in this game <laughs> listening to it. But you'll get to hear us react to it in real time because we don't know what's about to happen to this one, although it seems like Miami's got this Miami's one Miami's in control, under control. and they could have controlled it even more. They had the field goal. That got blocked here. So it's 17-13. The game is 17-3. still... 17-3. 17-3, excuse me. It's still there to be had for as far as the Patriots to come back. And they're about to get the ball at midfield because the Dolphins are backed up punting the ball here. So, right. yeah, they had a chance, as we know, too. What we've seen in the first two weeks is when you got a chance to put a team away, you better put them away or take advantage advantage of all the momentum you have at a moment because Mm -hmm. we're seeing some crazy momentum swings here in the first two weeks. That's what we call foreshadowing for our Sunday night game, even though we have no idea what's about to happen. So we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, But we have the games that are final. And you mentioned it, too, because some crazy plays, if you don't put a team away, even if you're at home, Sometimes you got to go to overtime. That's right. And that's what happened with the first game we're going to talk about. We have four sections. I think I've counted these right here. We have redemption games where teams that have kind of come back after a sluggish week one and come back and had a good week two. We got the 2 0 contenders who look strong. We've got the surprising 2 0 teams. And then we have a section called rookie quarterbacks. And that's just Colts and Texans. So. Rookie quarterbacks. So we'll get to all those. We'll start with uh, redemption here. And why are we starting with this game? I feel like this is going to put me in it's, a bad it's, mood it's, right away. We're, we're trying to. To get on you, man. We're we're trying to like just start off on a bad note and see if you can rebound and handle an early game interception here, yeah, right? And go from there. That's right. what we're trying to figure resiliency. out. Resiliency. Right what what, right. what kind of resiliency? Yeah. I what have. are you here? Let's see. Are you mentally tough? <laughs> so it was last year. It was a wild game. Seahawks and Lions. It was forty eight forty five, which ended up being crucial as a tiebreaker for two teams that we think are going to be in the mix here. And who knows? They could have similar records again this year. And so this was a big game. My Detroit Lions go down. They. Do force it to overtime. Give them credit for that. Jared Goff. Great resiliency. Back. Great resiliency for right. them. Um, but then the Seahawks just shredded the Lions defense in the overtime. Lions never touched the ball. It right. was Geno Smith putting it all together. Yeah. I mean, they, he looked unstoppable in that drive. And just from my perspective as a Lions fan, right. I'm like, man, oh, man. We gotta we gotta do some things to make things happen on defense. We gotta we gotta blitz a little bit, or we gotta bring pressure because it looks so easy at times for the Seahawks. I, uh, agreed. I th- I still think the jury's out on your defense, right? After two weeks, now it was a good week one performance, but we know, hey, it wasn't Travis Kelsey. There were some drops there, and I'm not trying to take anything away from the Lions, but we know, hey, there was there were some issues there that maybe they got away with. So yeah, uh, there's two things I think with your Lions. So we'll take. I think they're really good. 
I, I still do. I mean, they're dangerous. We know that. But the defense, yeah, I, I, it, it worries me as we go forward here. I still don't know if there's enough difference makers in the front seven. Uh, th- that would probably be the biggest thing that, for me in, in that department. Um, the other thing I think that's a little bit like I'm wanting more from your squad, right, is just the fact that they, you guys haven't gashed anybody in the run game yet either. Right, Seattle yeah. did a good job of hanging in there today, and your run game hasn't been able to take over in either game. I know you had the big drive at the end of the game last week against the Chiefs to kind of close it out with some big runs, but still, I'm just saying statistically, yeah. it hasn't been what you expect from you know one of the best running teams we saw in football last year. The Montgomery other, got hurt. He, he got hurt, hurt. Hurt his knee, right? And uh, Gibbs just had seven carries in this one. Yeah, which, uh, like I would have expected more out of him at this point of the year. I thought he was going to be more ready, infused in the game plan, ready to go. I don't know what the holdback is there. Jared Goff played phenomenal. All right, that's where I want to say that. And I know, oh, he threw a pick six and all of that. Yes, and to me, that hey, the 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 Seahawks are talented. Seahawks almost want to. The Seahawks are a lot like you guys. Like the jury's out on their defense, yep. and you have an explosive. They have an explosive offense, just like you. That. You know, can can make plays happen anywhere on the field, and you know, like two quarterbacks and and Jared Goff and Geno Smith who were having a second breath of fresh air in their career here, and they're just totally different guys. But like getting to Goff, I just want to say, first off, I really did feel like you guys were the better team in the field today. This was one of those games that was supposed to go back and forth and back and forth, and the, and they weren't going to be able to keep up with you. That's what it looked like to me. But I think mistakes on your side of the ball are really the 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 story here whether it's the pick six the fumble the first play of the third quarter by Montgomery that gave the the Seahawks the short field to score a touchdown you know to me that was really the big difference in the the game I know Amon Ra St. Brown had the fumble at 1.2 yep. but that was what right around midfield or maybe slightly in in uh, Seahawk territory, I can't remember exactly there either way. But but really, in basic football terminology, that's what I would say. You kind of had control of the game. You have the turnovers. They get the touchdown, right? It's yeah. 21-14. Things are good. You guys answer right back, right? I mean, Jared Goff, this is where I want to hit on. I mean, it, it's, it's fearless throwing the ball down the field. And it's pinpoint. And I'm just amazed at the transformation that those coaches and he have made to kind of coax that out of him. But that Seattle team hung around, Pete Carroll, playmakers, turnovers. We know they thrive on that. And they're one of those offenses that we look at and go, you give them too many chances, they got too many weapons. They're going to make plays happen. They're going to they're gonna tear you up. Uh, and ultimately, that was that was the difference. Great battling back by your football team. It was. But then there it was your defense in overtime, not being able to get off the field, make the stop. They let the touchdown up and see you later. Seattle scored 30 points in the second half in overtime in this game. Zero points in the second half last week. So which, which are the Seahawks? The ones that we saw last week that were totally disappointing or or more of this version where they are able to do some things offensively. I think it's closer to this. Still right? have holes defensively. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not sold on the defense. And, and then, of course, you know, uh, Woolen got hurt, right, today? He, Tariq Woolen, yeah. right? Devin Witherspoon, it was his first playing action, right? He certainly looked like he made a few mistakes. He got beat, burnt, burnt on the, what was that, the flea flicker touchdown, got a little too aggressive. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I, their defense definitely has to improve. But we've seen this out of Seattle the last few years where – Defense starts off horrible, and as the year goes on, they start to figure out and get better. We'll see if they can make that transition. Uh, but that goes for your your Detroit Lions too. And and the second half again, you know, disappointing with your defense. But also, I want to say your offense helped jumpstart the Seahawks offense right that's true those turnovers and took a little pressure off them oh man we go into the half right it's 14 7 oh here's the ball at the 23 yard line oh here you guys want to get started and get going oh yeah three plays 23 yards touchdown hey it's high football game right and they kind of just got the momentum on that on their side there and and geno smith made some phenomenal throws in the second half to, to metcalf and lockett to get the victory so both those teams one and one now another overtime game we have an 0-2 Chargers team now. Yeah. Titans, redemption for them. They mm-hmm. come back, they get the overtime win, and I have to apologize to Ryan Tannehill. I called him feeble. I put him in the Matt Ryan category. He's better than that still. He's better than feeble, he for sure. He looked right. a whole lot better. So maybe I just chalked that up to not being ready week one. Maybe he didn't do this, well, eat we, his Wheaties or whatever. Well, I don't know we what saw happened. a theme of no, the, 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 the teams that didn't play their quarterbacks in the preseason, those quarterbacks, for the most part, played like shit in week one. 
You know, and he was one of those guys. He played none in the preseason. So it showed. And like we said, with whether it was Lamar Jackson, Hurts, Burrow, whatever, if you don't play, it's just hard to be awesome in week one. It's the NFL. So the, the, that, that was the big thing there. But still, like, gutsy win today by the, the Tennessee Titans. Down 11 nothing early on. Things not quite going their way. Uh, they had they got a fourth down where they got stopped around midfield early on in the football game that gave the Chargers the, the short field, and they go down and for a 47-yard drive and get a touchdown, right? It, it's, it's the same thing with the Chargers, though. You know, if it just feels like there's they can never capitalize or utilize their talent to the extent of which they have on the football field. Mm-hmm. And then the Tennessee Titans are the exact opposite. They maximize talent of guys where a lot, a lot of, you know, a lack of household names, right? And you go, who the hell is he throwing to? Yeah. And we had big a, plays, we, Traylon Burks. That was the that was the big that was the big thing today. I mean, really. The difference in the game was that we got into the second half and Tannehill and then they came out, what was that? The first play of the half, they threw the 70 yard bomb to Traylon Burke. I believe it was the first play. It was the first drive. Maybe it was the second or third play, and I just missed it a little bit. But he was efficient, 20 completions. You know, they ran the ball effectively enough that it made the Chargers worry about stopping it and kept the safeties you know, down there in the box. Mm-hmm. And um, Tannehill made the big plays in the big moments when he had to, and, and that was the most important. And, hey, you know, the, the Chargers, the defense is disappointing. Again, for the second week in a row, it's like – your offense should not be one yard more than the Tennessee Titans offense. No Austin Eckler. I know. I know. It's still a great offensive line. It's still Justin Herbert. It's still a pretty good wide receiving core. Who did and go off in They this made game. some big plays. There, there's no doubt about that. There is. But two for 14 on third down. No run game this week. And Tennessee kind of won the situations. That's that's where I kind of looked at it. It boiled down to that a little bit, just situational football. And that's where Tennessee's tough, and they just know how to game plan and keep the game close. And as long as they can do that, you know, that's where they scare you, and they, they made the right, the right plays to pull it off in this one. Cortland858 asks you, Chris, did the Titans beat the Chargers or did the Chargers beat themselves? A lot of people are calling for Staley's job oh, well, after I, losing a game. They should have won. Now, I will say, although yeah. it's a little early for that, right. I will say, I don't know if there are odds out there for coaches on the hot seat and who's most likely to be the first one fired. Right. Not that I'm rooting for that. I never want to root for people no, who lose I hear their you, jobs. But we got to talk about it. But it's, I feel like Brandon Staley, business. he might be the favorite. I, I, I would think he is. I sat there today, no joke, in about like the early fourth quarter, and I was like, oh my gosh, if the Chargers lose this today with the way the Titans offense looked last week, right, you know, they're going to be calling for Staley because they're going to look at it and go, wait, our defense wasn't good last week. They got torched by two and company. Here we're playing the feeble Ryan Tannehill, <laughs> yeah. right? I heard it on a podcast. And, right, and we should be able to shut them down. And then they got talent on that side of the ball. And, of course, they don't take advantage of it that way. You know, uh, and, and that's where I think they're just going to be disappointed. It, it's, it's, you know, not quite as explosive as still as I would like it on the offensive side of the ball. And the defense just still has too many cracks in it at times mm-hmm. uh, to where you just feel like, again, the, the talent is better than the results we're seeing on the, on the field. 27-24, final score of the two overtime games are done. Now, you were right about the Patriots. you got to put them away when it's, you have the it's chance. It's 17-10. They got the short now. field. They scored. Oh Miami just got a big first down. So they're moving the ball here. They're close to midfield. There's 10-10 left in the fourth quarter. Two is having a day, but even within having a day, you know that means 17 points, and that's where the Patriots are always scary. And he's chucking one deep right now, and that and is it got picked off by Gonzalez. Oh boy, and here we go. Yep, Christian uh, Gonzalez, the rookie, oof, out of Oregon. Yeah, it was it was underthrown deep underthrown. ball. It was, it okay. definitely was. It became a jump ball with the rookie Gonzalez, and he did a great job going up and high pointing it. You don't see DBs do that all the time. We'll see if 17 points is enough to win here. It right. was for the Kansas City Chiefs. They defeated the Jacksonville Jaguars 17-9. to Evan Edmiston says, damn okay. 
Chiefs defense. They've been playing with their hair on fire, giving up 11.5 offensive points per game through two weeks, and they're not playing poor offenses either. Detroit and then Jacksonville put up 31 in their other games. Could this be a top 10 unit? I think it can be. You know, I think we talked about this a little bit in the offseason that this was a young, this is one of the youngest teams in football last year. They had a lot of young guys on the defensive side of the ball. And for young guys, they do a lot of stuff on defense. The Chiefs defense has definitely been the star of the show so far. And what just happened there? Okay, I got scared. I thought the Patriots fumbled. Sorry. But focus, the Chiefs focus. defense, I know, has been the star of the show. There's no doubt about that. Week one, it was impressive. Their D-line, their physicality, their versatility in mul- multiple defenses, I think really impressive. You know, this game was a little sloppy by both offenses. It really was. And, you know, you, you let the, the Chiefs hang around. Hey, you know it's only a matter of time before Mahomes makes a few plays and you go, wow, I'm a little disappointed in the Jaguars. A little disappointed. You know, their offense was good in week one, but not great. And they were a little sloppy in week one. Week two, similar thing. And what I think I'm a little surprised by, too, in the football game, just as far as Jacksonville's standpoint, right, is O-line wasn't real dominant in the run game. Mm-mm. And they were around Trevor Lawrence. Uh, I, I know there wasn't a ton of sacks, but he never felt comfortable whether they were around him in the pocket or he just couldn't find open receivers downfield. Again, one of the best defensive coordinators in all of football, Steve Spagnuolo, looked like he had a really good game plan. It's one I'm definitely you know kind of excited to watch. But you know the Chiefs' offense again. I'll say what I said. Tony hurt his foot a little, right? So that that scares me because they need him to be healthy. Because him and Kelsey, to me, are the only two guys that can do what I always say, go above and beyond the playbook, right? Where they can make things happen like, oh, okay, you know, I caught a five-yard pass and now I can go get 15, 20 more yards. And, uh, you know, that, 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 that to me is going to be big to, to watch that going forward. But, you know, really it was Jacksonville sloppy with the football, had some chances here and there to kind of – maybe get in control or put the Chiefs in the cor- in a corner here and put the pressure on them, and they weren't capable of doing that. They made some big plays, whether it was turnovers, fourth down stops. Um, they did it all, and then Mahomes just sprinkled in a few plays here and yeah. there of Mahomes' magic, and that's all it was. But, yeah, you know, this is how good the Chiefs are. They can muff punts, three turnovers. You lose the turnover battle. But your defense doesn't let Trevor Lawrence and company ever in the end zone, yep. right? Made life tough on them there. And that really was the difference of the game. Just the fact that they couldn't get in the end zone, had to settle for field goals, you know, got stopped on a fourth and goal, I believe, one time. They had the ball first and goal inside the 10, did, came away with no points. So they had it all going on today. Uh, but, like, really, big time effort by the Chiefs. That was a big game today. And you go 0 and 2. I know they're the Chiefs, but still 0 and 2, Chiefs, Patriots, Dynasty, whatever. That's hard to overcome. And the one thing, and I'm mad I didn't say this, you know, last week, and I'll say it again. The Chiefs never get the credit for the physicality they play. Sure. And you saw that again today. They out hit Jacksonville. And that was apparent. And Jacksonville is, you know, a pretty physical team. I was going to say that, yeah. too. It's not like Jacksonville's no, not No, they physical. usually bring it. Exactly right. Chris Jones back. That helped a sack and a half for him, the big guy, uh, giving some trouble to that interior of the Jacksonville offensive line. Isaiah Pacheco, that physicality, 12 oh. carries, 70 yards, ripped off a 31-yarder. Definitely. And, you know, ran the ball in the second half the way they needed to. And my other assessment with them would be just a little bit like, I wish they would just feed Pacheco the ball a little bit more. I really do. Mm. He's a special runner. And even if that means even screens in the pass game, whatever, he I should have thrown him in that group with Tony and Kelsey to go, he's another yeah. guy that can go above and beyond what's drawn on the, the chalkboard and make things happen. But, yeah, I'm a little worried about the – just the machine of the offense right now with the Kansas City Chiefs. It's a little too much like we saw today. I mean, Sky Moore had 70 yards, right? But he had 54 of them on a play where Mahomes ran around, stopped, 
yeah. cut back, and then threw a ball downfield, right? And that's just that's more Mahomes than the offense. Yeah. And I'd like to just see a little bit more offensive execution sure. as we go forward. But to, you know, to be a dynasty, which they are at this point, it's like you have these ebbs and flows, and yeah. maybe now is where the offense takes a dip, and here's some of those young guys on defense take a step forward. And I here know. you go. They weather the storm you do and they find ways to win. Yeah. Right. Exactly right. I mean, they were, you know, again, we, you know, wasn't pretty week one. They had plenty of opportunities to kind of pull that up. And that's the magic of the Chiefs. Like, they're never out of anything, and they fight, and they're scrappy for a team that everyone looks at as sexy and high-flying. For Mahomes, 305 yards, two touchdowns on his 28th birthday. If you had his phone number, you could have texted him happy birthday I know. today. I don't want to be such a jock sniffer, though, that I'm just texting him all what? the time, right? What? It's saying happy birthday to someone is <laughs> jock sniffing? Well, I don't know. He doesn't need to hear from everybody. You know, He's the kind of guy that, like, oh, Raheem Mostert just busted up the middle. Touchdown. Dolphins up. 24-10. Pending the extra point. Pending the extra point. You're right. We're just counting that. Oh. I think he would have appreciated a text. <laughs> but you don't have his number, so that's that's one of the good things about not having someone's number. You don't feel like you have to do I don't want to like be that guy. Yeah. And uh, you know what? No, even that. when you're, even when it is your birthday, and Mahomes is such a good guy that he'd be like, he wants to text everybody back that says yeah. happy birthday. And yeah. I don't want him to feel like he's going to text me or whatever. If he needs me, he can find me. Uh, but he's the man. We know that. What if what if I all of a sudden saw on Twitter that you gave him a shirt that said illegal gambleizing? <laughs> like, oh my God. It's the same you shirt. You guys are closer than I thought. <laughs> and, and, and he doesn't like my shirt. Sims doesn't <laughs> like me. What the f***? He gave away my shirt. But yeah, uh, Chiefs, big time. Yes. Really was. Uh Big win for them. And like I said, I'm a little disappointed in the way the Jaguars' O-line has looked mm -hmm. early on in the football uh, season. I know they're not at full strength, but we saw the Colts get after Trevor Lawrence a little last week, and uh, we saw it again today. Chris Jones they're, being back. Yes. Big time. It's big time. You know, It's a good D-line without him. He makes them a great D-line. And the other guy, they're still missing Charles Amenhu. Mm. I'm probably saying his name wrong. He went to my school, and I still butcher it. Butcher yeah. it, but he came from the 49ers. He was one of their big free agent signings. So you know, there, there's still some potential to be untapped there uh, with the Kansas City Chiefs. D. It's been the Chiefs and Bills the last couple of years going back and forth, trying for supremacy of the AFC. Bills looks like they're back. They crushed the Raiders 38-10. Pete has noted in our rundown here who was doing everything today. He is directing and producing this show because we don't make Kristen get up late at night. On, so we, don't, we don't make her participate in this craziness that we're trying to do here. She has other things, other responsibilities that she has to do. Uh, she has to wake up early tomorrow for yeah, PFT. PFT in the morning. Well, so do I. I know, but, but, but we, we don't care we about, care about you. <laughs> no, we care about Kristen more than we care about you. <laughs> Thank obviously. you. At least you're honest about uh, it. So you went out on a limb. You predicted a Raiders upset in this game. Thank you. I feel like you had out. a good week last week picking, right? You beat know. Florio. Yeah. I, don't I think, think you got maybe a little overconfident. I, I think I did. I, I think I'm on a limb a few too many things there instead of just playing, wait, one team's is desperate, another team's 1-0 and feeling good about themselves and playing on the East Coast, right? Uh, they, yeah, there was, a, there was a moment early in the game where I went, man, are the Bills just going to not be anything this year? I mean, the first drive of the game, the Raiders just marched down the field. They stopped Buffalo. I think Buffalo went three and out. The Raiders get the ball back. And to me, this was I mean, the turning point of the game where you felt like the Raiders had control. They throw a screen pass to Josh Jacobs. It gets tipped up in the air. It mm -hmm. gets intercepted. And really, there was no looking back after that. Yeah. There really wasn't. And they kind of controlled the game. And slowly but surely, Josh Allen just got on fire. Yeah. You, you Three and out for Buffalo. And you're like, uh-oh, here we go again. And then they go touchdown, touchdown. They do turn over on downs. But then they go touchdown, touchdown, field goal, touchdown. Game over. Yeah. Game <laughs> over. And had a had a, what, a fourth and one at the one and came away with no points in the second quarter at one point, That was right? a turnover on that downs. That was a turnover on downs. Sorry yep. about that. I'm, yep. I know. I'm sorry. I'm trying to look at stats and do all of that. Here was the biggest thing for me. Yep. Buffalo stopped the run, right? Yeah, that was an did. issue last week. And this Raiders offensive line, you've heard me say it a million times over the last month, right? They're gigantic. Mm -hmm. So that was really encouraging. McDermott has a good feel for McDaniel's offense, right? He does. He's always given McDaniel some issues, and he gave him some issues again today. And then I think the other thing that I was just absolutely thoroughly impressed by, Josh Allen's stat line. Read it for the people out there. 31 of 37, 274 yards, three touchdowns, but the big one, zero interceptions. Zero interceptions, and even the, the 31 completions for 274 – but it says patience, yeah, right? And that's the big thing. 
It, you know, he doesn't have. Uh, hopefully, you know, we saw a running game today by James Cook where they can do that a little bit, and then he doesn't always feel like he's got to be the savior of the world. And that was encouraging. They got Gabe Davis going a little today. Yep. So hopefully this can be something that kind of jump starts the Buffalo Bills. I know I've, you know, been a little bit down on them, but you know, I'm I'm not so stupid to say they're not dangerous still. I know that. With this quarterback, and I'm still a big believer in the coaching staff and all that. And then and yeah, I wish they had one more splash player on both sides of the ball, but it's still a really good football team. And uh, hopefully they they got their got their stuff straight today. Yeah, defensively they allowed the 172 rush yards last week against the Jets, and so they come back this week just 55 rush yards Total allowed, domination. which is they weren't even that. It was like that's basically inflated too because they held Josh Jacobs nine carries for negative two yards. That I mean it's the insane. speed of Buffalo won the battle of the size of the Raiders. There just was so many times where I looked and went, oh my gosh, this guy shot the gap and then the play's over. It's just that they, 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 they couldn't react to it. And I'll say this too. You know, Garoppolo, of course, had, you know, some bad interceptions, um, but it wasn't bad interceptions. This, the, the tip pass and then the other play Bernard made was a pretty good play, if I remember, for the second interception. But uh, the, the Josh Jacobs is... Like we talk about, you know, the quarterbacks who didn't play in the preseason. Well, he didn't do anything. He didn't even practice. Yeah. He looks a step slow, and he looks a size too big in the waist right now. Mm. I'm not trying to be funny or a jerk. He just looks a little guy like a guy that's not in shape all the way yet, right? You know, he's a thick guy naturally. And like a 38 me, when he should be maybe a 36. A 34, it's a 36 or 34, right. Yeah. Right. And another week of running, and he'll be down to a 34 or 36, right? But he's not himself, or he's not the guy we saw last year quite yet. Uh, hoop stuff says to you. Yeah, what up, hoop stuff? I don't know if you're going to be Hoop stuff saying, on football stuff? I, I okay. Know, right? Well, maybe you might, might think you should stick to hoops after this. <laughs> he goes, looks like the Bills did more than just add Dalton Kincaid. Upgraded both starting guard spots, promoted James Cook <laughs> to the featured back, added Harris and Murray as power compliments to Cook, and it's looking solid. An effective non-Josh Allen Bills run game. This is a comment that yeah. you can only make after you torch someone on the ground. You can't, you can't make this after a game like no. week one where they don't do anything. Hey, of that. Stick, to, stick to basketball hoop <laughs> stuff. Who are you talking to? Are you coming to? No, hey, hey, listen, I, I hear what you're saying. You know, I get it. I, I, I know they made some additions to the football team. I'm just saying they weren't earth-shattering a little bit. I guess that's where I was trying to you know make that point there, right? Dalton Kincaid did look good today, though, and and maybe he can contribute a little bit more or quicker quicker than I expected him to. Um, and I know I didn't mean to dis. You listen, you know hoop stuff that I like the Bills and Josh Allen. All right, I got to make some tough picks every now and then. It's not always easy, uh, but yeah, they they got back on track today in a big way, and hopefully they can start to ride this momentum and build on it a little. Devonte Adams did have to leave the game in the fourth quarter. Took a pretty nasty hit big to the shot. head, yes. and then, yeah, hit his head on the turf. I think maybe even after that, or had a little whiplash. So hope, hopefully he is uh, okay and can come back and play for the Raiders because they certainly need him. One more game to talk about in our redemption category. Redemption, and it did not look like it was going to be redemption Woo! for your Giants. Against Big the blue Cardinals. Dodgy like, man. like, how much were you sweating it? What? I was literally going, the f- season's over. We suck. I mean, <laughs> I mean, Pete Demolitis, he heard me. Morgan's a giant fan, right? So, so we it's 20 I was to just nothing like, at halftime. 20 to nothing. Okay. Um, can't, can't do anything. Yeah, we're yeah. getting trolled by Matthew Berry. We oh. couldn't do anything, right? The offense looked like crap. And. Josh Dobbs and the Cardinals offense looked like it was the greatest show on turf right, in <laughs> yeah. the first half. I mean, they were doing whatever they wanted. Run it, throw it. He was running around, scrambling, making plays. I mean, it was embarrassing to where I was like, man, I guess this is just going to be the year we're going to have with the New York Giants. The turning point, even though it didn't show right away, was I, I feel like the Giants just opened it up in the second half a little bit. Instead of like, hey, week one and last year, the formula was run the ball and play actions and boots and a quarterback run and we'll make a lot of good eight and ten yard throws over the middle and all that. It's like they finally just said, screw it. We, we, teams are taking this away. We're not running the ball great right now. So we got to start opening the field up to open up some of our other stuff. And that's where Jalen Hyatt came in. Oh, here we go. So yep. we got an O. Murray 271. I don't know why I said it like that, but he says, damn okay. 
Jalen Hyatt busting the top to get the Giants the spark and Vanilla Vic leading the largest comeback for <laughs> the New York football <laughs> Giants in a very, very I long time. I might have time. to steal that one right there. You Vanilla Van- Vic? Vanilla Vic. Wow, I like it. Yeah. Damn, that's a good one. Um, yeah, that, that was, first off, a very sneaky must-win game for the Giants. Mm-hmm. We got the 49ers Thursday, Oof. right? Yeah. So the, we know they're better than us. It's just, yeah. you know, I'm not saying we can't win, but that game's going to have to fall our way to a degree. And Saquon probably iffy. Very exactly. Iffy I would say injury. probably no way, yeah. honestly. But what about Jalen Hyatt, though? Yeah, Jalen Hyatt, I think, just brings an element that they haven't had, you know, in, in recent history. And the fact of a guy, like, back to the days of Odell and everybody, a guy that can fly, that scares the crap out of the secondary, and – you know, make safeties backpedal. I mean, it's it's no, like, it, it feels like they hit a bomb to him, and all of a sudden the offense started to work a little bit. And then all of a sudden there's intermediate throws were there once again. And Darren Waller was open over the middle all of a sudden. And then there was another big throw to Jalen Hyatt. You know, two for, what did he have, 89 yards receiving? But yeah. Danny Dimes really threw the ball well. Uh, I'll give the Cardinals some credit. They're scrappy. Their defense does have some guys that are making some plays. Gardeck, Zaven Williams, uh, the damn Thompson. I think he got one of the interceptions today. That was a great play by him and a, and a nice return. Um, they're better than I expect them to be, really, through both weeks here. They've had a chance to win both games, the Arizona Cardinals. James Con- Connor ran the ball well. I'm a little worried about our defense. I want to see what we did as far as the Giants adjusting in the second half. Mm-hmm. But, you know, they're a blitzing football team. And it's so far, it looks like none of our blitzes are getting close because everybody's ready for it, and maybe teams are too well-prepared. And Wink Martindale might have to think about some change-ups and a few little different approaches rather than just being aggressive, which, which worked so well for them last year. Well, the Cardinals did have 23 first downs in the first three quarters and then just one first down in the fourth I, quarter. That's where I, you know, I would love to see or get a feel a little bit better if it was something schematically they did or... Was it more just like Arizona kind of lost their mojo here and couldn't get anything going? That's what I don't have a great feel for. You know, I don't get to see all the, you know, the replays. I'm trying to watch other games. And, of course, it's hard to see on TV in general. Um, but, yeah, it just felt like there was an adjustment made and, and uh, they made the appropriate plays. And I think, you know, the other thing that I, I do remember seeing is just the Cardinals in the second or the fourth quarter, some penalties. That was the thing I wrote down. Penalties killing the Cardinals, right? To where it put them in some situations where they they don't want to be in third and sixteen or third and long. And I think that was you know a big part of the football game too. And the Giants got the momentum going. They had some long drives that chewed up the clock as well. And that's what they did last year. And uh, great clutch comeback by Vanilla Vic. Cardinals 0-2 for the first time since 2018. Yeah, that's, I wouldn't have necessarily yeah, guessed that. I wouldn't but, have either. Uh, not great. Not great for Arizona right now. So that closes the book on the redemption teams. We just saw Ramondre Stevenson score a touchdown, so the Patriots back they, down they a they touchdown. right down the field. Stevenson's another guy that looks like he might be a 38 waist that needs to be maybe back to a 30. I don't know if that was by design. Maybe I think he for... was always a 38 oh, okay. waist. I don't, I don't think it's, it's always been like that. I think it's, it's just uniforms, these Pat Patriot maybe. uniforms I'm that make him more. look a little chubbier. <laughs> He's always been like kind of a yeah. the round mound of rebound, yes. the round mound of running back a little bit. But he's got some sweet feet for a guy like that. And yeah, we'll uh, we'll see it. We'll we'll keep you up to date with how this finishes, even though you'll know <laughs> you, how it you, the listener who already knows what happened in this game, uh, as we learn as we go. Let's go to the two and zero contenders now. The team that continue yeah, to roll right. and the team that rolled your New York Giants last week on Sunday Night Football. The Cowboys rolled the Jets, another New York team, 30-10. to 10. Um, So, I mean, basically, well, let's, let's, let me look here. Yeah, go ahead. Get digested. I mean, I'm going to digest this yeah. for a second here. I mean, like our main takeaway is basically – this game was never in doubt. Forcing some turnovers by Zach Wilson. Offense looking efficient. And Micah Parsons looking like a one-man wrecking crew. Micah Parsons is the best defensive player in football. Okay, That's, it, To me, it's not a discussion right now. I I'm Major respect to Nick Bosa and Chris Jones and Aaron Donald and T.J. Watt. Like, I, they're, you're awesome. I, I, but nobody looks like Micah Parsons right now in the football field. I made the mistake on Football Night in America going tonight of going, I've never seen anything like this before, right? Mm-hmm. Which I have. Jason Garrett called me on. He's like, you have seen something like this before. You were young. You know, you're watching your dad play. And we said this last year. This is Lawrence Taylor-ish. He's gotten better as a pass rusher. 
He's gotten better as a physical specimen. He's, he's more explosive now than ever. He's got the best first step in football right now and really one of the best first steps I think I've ever seen in my life. I, I'm, and, and I'm not trying to be sugarcoat shock jock there. Mm-hmm. Like, he comes – there's plays where you look up and you're like, what was that blur that just – damn, it's Micah. I, it's unbelievable. We're all going to – all right, so there's, there's two things here. Everyone's going to look at Zach Wilson's stat line and go, it was Zach Wilson. 12 of 27, 170 yards, a touchdown, and three interceptions. Two of the interceptions. This is where, like, somebody needs to get in Zach Wilson's ear, and Zach Wilson needs to get in his own brain here and go, the game is over, and don't give everybody a headline. You threw an interception early in the game. That's fine. The game was over, and he threw two more interceptions. To now where everyone can go, who the f- threw three interceptions? You got to play the game within the game a little bit. And know that don't give everybody the gasoline or the jump off to do that. Because the bottom line in this game here, the really were is that we knew the Jets were going to have a hard time on offense. I mean, no shit. We knew that. The problem with this game was the Jets' defense. Mm. That was the issue. The Jets' defense from the get-go. The Cowboys won the toss, and they said, we'll take the ball. And they went down the field. And the Jets couldn't get off the field on the defensive side of the ball. And, you know, this is one angle I wish I would have said a little bit during the week. If there was one team that was going to be ready for the Jets' speed on defense, it'd be the Cowboys because they see that every day in practice, right? So they weren't like, Mm. oh, my gosh, you're so fast, right? That's usually where the Jets overwhelm people because they're like, whoa, it feels like there's 12 or 13 of them out here, right? And, of course, the Cowboys have a defense like that. And then they have an offensive line that doesn't get overwhelmed by that Jets D-line. And they could run it just good enough to where the Jets had to respect that. But they had a lot of really creative... They took advantage of the over-aggressiveness of the Jets. Just whether it was misdirection, the bootlegs, the play actions, they did a really good job. And to me, that was the big part of the game. The Jets, some bad penalties and some big moments. Okay? And... And just not being able to get off the field against the Dallas Cowboys, 31 for 38, 255 by Dak Prescott. And then they ran the ball for 134 yards too? Yeah. I mean, that was an ass whooping that the Jets haven't really received in a while on that side of the ball. There's some long drives too. I'm yes, looking at they, it. There right? were five drive, one, two, three, four, five. Five drives for the Cowboys that were 12 plays or longer. That that That's when you play that Seattle scheme, right? And... That was always the thing when Seattle was really good. Like, I know, like, New England and some of the teams that had a little success on them, they'd always be like, you're not going to throw for 400. We want to just throw for six yards at a time, five yards at a time, because it's hard to get big plays against that scheme. So you got to just be patient and go, okay, we're not going to get big plays, but we're just going to methodically go down the field and be, be who we are that way. And that's where they were great. And then they didn't, you know, didn't force balls into the end zone. They were like, okay, we'll kick a field goal here. Fine. We'll trust our defense a little. And, and that, to me, was the big key of the football game. One of the big moments of the game, to me, um, and just to hit on real quick, the yep. game was 10-7. to 7. Belichick is going f- crazy right now because they just got a personal foul, unnecessary roughness hit. Uh, that gave Miami the first down. Did you see it? I did see it. He hit him in the head. It was a bang bang play, but yeah, it's. I mean, it was clearly you know unnecessary roughness. Yeah. Um, and that was a, a big Pipe moment down, of the Bill. game. Pipe down, Bill. Thank you. But All yeah, right. it was second and five. Uh, so wait, getting back to my thought there, which I totally forgot. Oh I no, saying. I knew this was going to happen. No, hold on, hold on, hold we on. You can't have close games. On well, Sunday night, it, it makes doing the pod now completely. It's perfect. This is awesome. We're having a great time. Oh, here was the big point yeah, I yeah. wanted to get into the game. The game was ten to seven. The Jets had, the Jets were doing a good job, and they, they had a third and long, third and goal. It might have been third and long. They were down there close to the end zone. This is when they made it eighteen to seven. All right, they. Bull, it, they it was third and thirteen from the thirteen. Yeah, they all out. They blitzed. They brought everybody, and he threw a seam route. They kind of had it covered, but he panicked as the ball was going. They got pass interference, and then became first and goal at the one. That was a huge moment. I thought that was a blown call by the Jets there. Just be hey, let them kick the f- 
field goal and you know be down 13 to 7. That to me it was the moment where they let the game get away from them a little bit. And of course the offense couldn't quite get anything going. There was no run game to talk about today. Zach Wilson led the team in rushing. Yeah. And Ooh, but did you see what Brees Hall tweeted out after the game? Well, this goes back to what we said last year. Did a you bit. see that? I, I saw it. Four footballs, right? Yeah. It was a football, a football. He's football. mad that he, he had didn't four get the ball more. For nine yards. Okay. But like the, they didn't get any of the rhythm. Dallas had everybody at the line of scrimmage. They couldn't protect. They couldn't run the ball that way, right? And that's where Dallas is scary. Dallas can get after the quarterback so quickly that they play man-to-man and they go, so what? We're going to leave our guys in these situations because Micah and DeMarcus are going to get there before you ever separate from these dudes who are also good man-to-man corners anyways. So very impressive. Dallas definitely looks like one of the better, best teams in football. Yeah, uh, well, I know we thought they were one of the best teams. I think they're even maybe a little better than I thought they were. Like you know, someone, Bowl someone picked them to win the Super That's Bowl. Right. I'm Look feeling so good about that right now because <laughs> you're going to get some bandwagon picks right now. I'll be like, I was there from the beginning with the Dallas Cowboys. Like that's even like a thing. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I believed in the Cowboys from the start. Like well, that's <laughs> yeah. really going out on a limb there. But it was this year. Um, Ceedee uh, Lamb was great. He made a lot of tough catches as he was getting hit, and I mean, you know, he, he really was tough in the football game. I give him a lot of credit. Tony Pollard, he ran hard. And Dallas dominated the clock, uh, dominated the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. And yeah. uh, like we're saying, they're, they're definitely one of the best teams in the league. Amiri Jets wants to give a damn okay to the Jets O-line. They had Jets uniforms on, he says, but they were clearly playing for the Cowboys. So he thinks that they were <laughs> Cowboys uh, undercover. Uh, Zach Wilson had .2 seconds every drop back with no receivers uh, getting open. See, that, that, that's, that's where I just want everybody to keep it real. I'm not trying to sit here and try to justify Zach Wilson or anything like that. Yeah. But I'm just saying, I don't care who you had on there, that team today. There was nothing. And he, they got totally smashed, and they need to play a little bit more. And, and Pete will tell you this, right before he threw the touchdown pass to Garrett Wilson, I said, I was like, can they block it up and throw a play-action pass and let him feel comfortable once? And then, boom, bam, touchdown. And you know everyone was like, oh, you said it's him, blah, blah, blah. But they need to play that style of football a little bit more. They can't just run the Aaron Rodgers offense here. They're, he, he's not going to be as good at – seeing the blitzes, picking up the blitzes, getting the ball out of his hands quickly like an Aaron Rodgers. But the one thing he can do is you give him a little time, he can still throw lasers, and you saw today, the dude can run. I mean, he's a legit runner. And uh, that's where this can get interesting. The Dolphins just missed a long field goal. No, Patriots going to have a chance. They're going to have the a ball, chance. Two minutes to go. They need to go 55 yards to, for a touchdown to tie this game up. I think uh, Zach Wilson's in good hands, though. He got uh, Hackett over there. So, I mean, I think it's going to get better. I would think they can make them. the proper adjustments as they go forward here. So, uh, the Cowboys are 2-0. and The Baltimore Ravens are 2-0 and now. They beat the division rival Bengals, who dropped to 0-2 right. on the season. Although, they did that last year, though, too, that's right? right. It was I, fine. I, I know. It, it, um, that's exactly right. Not great for them. Though uh, Eric D. Pasta says, "Damn okay, Todd Munkin might not be Bill Wash." Florio mockingly says that he notes, uh, but he's damn sure uh, what the Ravens needed at OC. So it's uh, opening up Lamar Jackson, who made some dynamic throws. The running game was was good with Lamar and Gus Edwards there, and they did just enough to beat the Bengals twenty seven twenty four. That that that's right. I mean, the offense definitely looked better. You know, that's where you know I, I'm not going to let Florio get on Todd Todd Munkin too much. You know, I, mean, I know there was a lot of talk and hype about it, today, but they go back into guys didn't play in the preseason. Lamar was rusty. Yeah. You know, that Texans defense had a good little game plan for them and made things hard. There's no doubt about that. Lamar looked like a different guy today. He really did. He looked much more comfortable in the pocket. They got the run game going, and Lamar made some incredible big throws down the football field. Wasn't and there one throw that you said, like even Jason Garrett, when you guys were watching it, was like, dang. Oh, he, he hit the deep post of Zay Flowers. Zay Flowers, I mean, yeah. there was... Usually when you throw that route, you throw it way high and let the guy go run there. He threw a 60-yard like banana ball dart when he just hit him in the face mask. And Zay Flowers' strength for the small guy that he is, yeah. I mean, he's special. He really is. I mean, he, he's, he really is. But, yeah, I think the big thing is Lamar, so dangerous with his legs. They got Gus Edwards going a little bit. And then, of course, the other side of the story is still this struggling Bengals offense that – has had a hard time finding its rhythm 
It found its rhythm a little bit, and Joe Burrow threw an interception as they were going in, and that was a big moment in the football game. There's no doubt about that. To the point where, like, Geno Stone, like, he should have, it should have been a, a hundred yard pick six. I don't know if you saw this. I did not. Burrow threw the interception over the middle. Geno Stone was the backside safety. He made a great play undercutting a post. Then he turns up the field, and, I mean, he's gone, and he has blockers in front of him. Ooh. They push Burrow out of bounds. If he just cuts back, he's going to walk in for the touchdown, and he walked out of bounds. But either way. That's uh, what you got to do, my rugby style, uh, start pitching the ball back and forth. He That's, didn't even have to yeah, do that. It was really odd. Wait till you see the highlight. You're going to yeah. go, wait, that was odd. Like, why did he go out? It was Defenses should always be thinking – Touchdown after a turnover. It was so a, unraven like. Oh yes, you're right. Right, the Ravens They're are the, always like. Right. Let's they go do. to the house. Let's lateral it. Let's, we'll never <laughs> give up on this. Right. That's what. That's what they. You know, Ed Reed and and Ray Lewis and everybody there. But yeah, there was a different offense there. And I think the the big thing again too is just yeah. I'm, I'm, the Bengals had a punt return for a touchdown. We're being totally controlled in the football game, and the punt return kind of made things even a little bit. And I, I just think that. Yeah, they gotta open it up a little bit more. There's gotta be a little more creativity. And and Baltimore was all over their stuff today. Twenty seven completions for two hundred and twenty two yards yeah. with that group of weapons after eighty two yards throwing last week, not acceptable. They couldn't get into a rhythm either because no. the Ravens did a good job. They won the time of possession by a pretty substantial margin yes, in this one. And I'm looking at the possessions for the Bengals. Looks like they had basically three in the first half and yeah. then four in the second half. No, and it, was the nothing in the, it was nothing in the first half. I mean, it really wasn't. It was an ugly field goal drive. was basically the only thing they had to speak of in the first half. So that's where that's a little disappointing. Um, and, you know, again, we've seen them bounce back. And I'm not going to count them out. I know that. They're still a really good football team their defense still has talent we know that too but yeah the offense is where their money and assets are and they need to start coming through in a big way here in, in week three and as we're sitting here let's just talk about it because it's fourth and four for the Patriots with one minute left they're on the 33 yard line Mac drops back to pass he got some pressure and he did a great Caught. job getting the ball out of his hand a yard but short a with yard short lateral. and he pitched it like you were just talking about Cole Strange holy UT crap he almost got it I mean that I was really close I don't think he did I don't think he did. They're gonna. They're giving him a horrible spot. No, I mean, no, no. They no, gave they're him giving a him first down. That needs to be challenged. They need to stop They'll the look clock at it. and Whoa, challenge that. Oh my gosh! Mac Jones did an unbelievable job getting it out of his hands to Gasecki. <laughs> Gasecki got hit instantly, threw it back, oh, lateral. Heads up, playing Cole Strange. Cole Strange got it. I thought he was short. Oh, he got. I think I he don't got think it. So. No, oh, he yeah. No way. That's right on the line. He had to get to. Oh, I think that's a first down. What yard line was that? He had to get to the 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 twenty nine. Oh, he's there. No, nah, his easy. Knee. Well, let's oh, see. We'll there. see. You I think give his that knee to down. Cole Strange. I think his knee was down here. This is a great look right here, and we're just gonna talk about it for a second. For all that but he's been through knees as a meme down on draft right day? there. I think no. the ball's in his right hand. I don't think he got to the twenty nine yard line. It. He got it. And they gave him that. He's still not at the twenty nine yard line. He, oh yeah, he is. Well, his he is now after there. he's rolled a few no. inches. No, I, I think that's a first down. I'm Man. making the call right. I'm Terry McCauley, and I'm saying that's a first down. You'll Man. see it. I, I'd love to hear what they're saying here. Oh, I don't oh. think he did. All right, so as as they look at this here yeah, with right. multiple angles, yeah. let's go uh, to our next game here, keeping one eye on the game in action. Uh, I lost my place here. I know, oh, we got okay. one more about the contenders. Yeah. Uh, your 49ers, they beat the Rams. Rams kept it close. The Rams are like the most surprising team in football right now. Got like, what, 20-something rookies? 20-something rookies. I mean, we know he's going to be short, guys. You guys are wrong. No. Um, he... he uh, the Rams, I just can't say enough about the toughness of the team and the way they're coached. And they give the 49ers problems because, yeah, one, they're tough. They can kind of match the physicality of the 49ers, right? Mm -hmm. They're not afraid to just say, Let, you want to smash faces? Let's do it. <laughs> and then McVay and Raheem Moore. McVay, of course, an offensive genius uh, and knows how to attack that 49er defense a little bit. See, right there. It, his shins came down. See, they, he didn't get it. But there's that, okay? And then Raheem Morris and his knowledge of Shanahan. See, this is where he has a different advantage than a lot of t people in football. Not only was he a defensive coach on the Shanahan staff, he was on the offensive staff with Shanahan in Atlanta. So he really knows 
kind of Kyle to a different degree than most people. After review, the ruling the down short of the line to gain. Chris Sims was right. My laser focus eyes call reverse Dolphins ball game over. Yes. Why are I you saying you can, no? Are you a Patriots fan? I think you, we wanted to see what happened. 38 final seconds. Yeah, we just wanted <laughs> to see what You got to produce a end. podcast, Pete. Pete's right. going, oh, no. <laughs> Pete's watching the game, too. He's like, the hell with this podcast. I want to. Uh, but watch, his shin is down right here. See? And he had not finished the fall there. So, all right, either all way. Right, let's fin- let's uh, put a button on this game. We'll put put a button. No, no, put a button on that game. Let's, oh, let's you right put a button now. on it? Yeah, yeah, the Dolphins. Yeah, it's over now. Yeah. So, Dolphins win. Beat the, the, do- the Dolphins beat the just have a little too much talent for the Patriots. The Patriots, I'm still not counting them out. I know they're 0-2 here, too. But we've seen the defense play good two weeks in a row yeah. right? against the two best offenses or one of the two out of the three best offenses in exactly. football, right? Yes. Or four best offenses. I know there's a lot of good ones out there. Um, but, yeah, they're, they're going to be mad and – they blew some things coverage-wise. They had a turnover when they were driving once where Van Ginkle – or no, Bradley Chubb stripped them. Um, they're just, you know, again, the, the Patriots are good. They're not super talented, and they have to play the game a certain way where it's got to be conservative, protect the ball, right? And uh, the Dolphins just have a little too much firepower for them right now. Yeah, Patriots could be 2-0, and and I don't think they were the better team in either of those games. So that, that speaks to – how they've been able to manage those games. Exactly and stay right. In those they're games. not as talented as the two teams they played. That that's for sure. But yeah, they're a team that, you know, Mac Jones throwing an interception in the borderline red zone like we saw when we started the podcast. Yeah. And then uh who was it? Douglas, who caught a ball, turned up the field, and Chubb did a great job chopping the, the ball out of his hands as they were kind of driving another time. And yeah, they're just not good enough to overcome those. It's not the Tom Brady Patriots. All right. Hey, Pete. Back cut, to the Rams. Pete cut that part out where we're both saying that he was going to get the line to gain right there. Just <laughs> yeah, whatever. Make a, make a note of that. Yeah, we, we knew it. We did know it the whole time. We just wanted to have like a little good, back good, and forth, like good. first take Stephen A. Smith. Said so right so there. getting back to that Rams 49ers game, yeah. though, right? So we talked about the knowledge of McVay. McVay is, of course, a great offensive coach. Raheem and McVay both know Shanahan's offense a little bit. So that's where they're tough. But Stafford was phenomenal. Again, he was phenomenal. And I know he throws two interceptions. The first interception, and this was the turning point of the game. This really was. It was 17 all. It was third quarter. The Rams were driving, and I'm going to say they're on the 25 20 cone in. Kyron Williams is over the middle, the old Notre Dame running back. Mm-hmm. He's wide open. Stafford throws it right at his face. And you could see Williams kind of gives the old, let me turn around because I want to see where I am so I can catch this and spin, right? Doesn't look the ball in. It bounces off his face, up into the air. Guess what? Interception, interception 49ers, and the game was never the same after that. It just was like a total momentum, buzzkill, whatever you want to say there. And they went down and got a field goal. They got a quick stop of the Rams, and they went down and scored a touchdown. It was 27-17, and that was kind of all she wrote. Mm -hmm. And that's where the Rams are not good enough to overcome that kind of stuff right now. They kind of got to play a perfect game. McCaffrey, the 49ers, they're just so much there. It wasn't a great defensive day by this 49ers football team, that's for sure. Yeah. You know, they're not going to be happy with letting up 386 yards of offense, seven for 14 on third downs. And it wasn't like they were like big, big plays either by the Rams. That's I think what their I'm biggest saying. play was 20 yards. That's so was, what I'm saying. It's, yeah. it's, the, it's the same thing we were saying Stafford when he, before he got hurt last year, remember? He doesn't have a lot of time. He's doing it with his experience, his unbelievable gifted arm, his feel, and then McVay coaching it up. And. With a guy in Pakua Nakua who's just slowly tearing up too. 15 receptions, 147 yards. So that's it's ridiculous. Crazy. So what, what, is, what is he doing it's, right now? It's like he has the most catches for any player. Something like that. Two games into his career, he's had he had 20 targets in this game alone. I know. He's, he's all they got really as far as a consistent threat in the pass game. We missed a huge opportunity. We should have had him above Jackson Smith and Jigba and Zay Flowers. <laughs> we would be geniuses right now. He's a polished guy who's not real explosive, yeah. but he can run routes and he can read coverages. And for a McVay yeah. offense, he'll if you can do that a little bit, you can run routes and read coverages, 
He'll find nine million ways to get you six and eight yard completions, right? That's kind of how Cooper Cup started his career. And then all of a sudden it was like, wait, he can do more than this, and he's faster and explosive, and let's go from there. Um, but they kind of held the 49ers pass game in check as far as big plays. The 49ers threw the, I mean, ran the ball really well. We know they're better than the Rams. Uh, Rams did a great job of hanging in there, making things tough. But, yeah, ultimately the mistake – the and just the the offensive firepower that the 49ers bring between Debo and Ayuk and McCaffrey they're just they're too much for the Rams to handle right now. Debo and McCaffrey are special special football players. Debo I think he might be the number one player I enjoy watching right now the most. Right? Because he's just like he just does not go down. He's the maybe one of the most physical if not the most physical runners I don't in think the that's, game. I don't for a receiver he's no doubt to your point. The most physical receiver in football. I mean you don't see receivers just go like, let me lower my head and just run you over, yeah. right? I mean, and it doesn't matter if it's a safety or a linebacker. He just goes, fine, I'll just run you over. He, you know, we, you, we've said it a lot, right? He's a running back playing receiver, and that's how they use him. And, you know, even the little screen touchdown pass at the end of the football game, you got the 11-yard touchdown there. You know, just the cuts, the moves, the power into the end zone. Good win by the 49ers. I think they were kind of sleeping on the road. I think they thought, hey, we're much better than the Rams. We're going to come in here and steamroll them. It probably didn't feel like the road either because there were probably There's a, a lot good of 49er number of 49er fans, 49er fans there. Was. there. there Matty was. B. Well was a little worried, though. He goes, yeah. Purdy did miss some slam dunks today. Yes, he did. One week hiccup or sign of something else? No, I mean, Ooh. I think it's more of a one week hiccup. Oh, Purdy is not like you know, the most gifted thrower in the world. Right? And it's a very long motion. You see how he throws, right? And his arm has a lot of moving parts. He can lose control of the ball every now and then. We saw that in the Seattle wild card game. Remember in the first half of that game? He ended up having great numbers and stats, but he missed some wide open people. And that He can do that at times a little bit. But I think that's more of a once in a while thing than you know consistent uh, thing to happen with, with Purdy. All right, time to go into the realm of the surprisingly... 2-0 and teams, and for that, we're going to open up the newspaper. Go to press. Give me the headlines presented by Hyundai. Three games to talk about here. We'll start with the Falcons defeating the Packers. A comeback victory against Green Bay and Jordan Love. Your headline for this game, Chris, is... Finding their wings. Oh, yeah. Because Falcons uh, they, have wings. They do fly. I mean, I said this headline before, and <laughs> Amon looked up, and he was like, I don't get it. And I was like, they're Falcons, and they have wings. And yeah. Desmond Ritter made some throws today yeah. that got the air game going a little bit. And I go, but Falcons don't fly. Just to see if like anyone would fall for that like little <laughs> nugget that's not true. But, uh, You're I, just I, keeping I, us Falcons on our toes, right? Exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, what a comeback win, too, because it looked like a game where the Falcons were dead and done. And I will say this, yeah, because we talked about it a lot last week on Monday, the fourth down calls, maybe coaches being a little too aggressive. If Arthur Smith is not aggressive in fourth down situations, they don't win this game. No. They score the touchdown on the one with Desmond Ritter, which probably most teams are going to go for that yeah, fourth down. Right. But then he did go for the fourth down late where they could have kicked a field goal to go ahead. Right. Would have left a little more time, and right. Green Bay still had a couple timeouts. Yes. I think that was crucial for them to get that first down, and then at that point, Green Bay had the ball with 40 seconds and no timeouts. I, I, I do agree uh, 100%. I'm with you there all the way. They even went for it on another fourth down and didn't come away with a touchdown inside the five-yard line. Mm. Uh, he threw made a great throw to Mac Hollins in the back of the end zone. Mac Hollins' toes came in down. That. And the heel touched out of bounds, right? Which that's still, you got to get all, when you do that, if the toes just hit and you pull them off the air, yes. it's a touchdown. But when the feet stay on the ground, then, okay, the whole foot has to come in in play or if, in bounds. If you're a receiver, you just want to go toe. If you go toe heel, then you're out it's of bounds. It's still part of the step. Yeah. Exactly yeah. right. And I, I, I say this, you know, Atlanta was the better team on the field today. Mm. They were. They kind of made some mistake, missed the field goal, missed the opportunity there on the fourth down, right, to score a touchdown. Um, Desmond Ritter was a little shaky early on in the football game, to say the least, like a little bit to the point where we were all in the, in the viewing room were like, whoa, whoa. I mean, he threw an interception uh, that wasn't good to Rasul Douglas, but also – Jair Alexander, he hit him in the chest. That was maybe going to be a pick six on like a short throw. He made some throws where you go, 
man, he's not seeing the field the right way today. Like, that would be concerning the offensive coordinator. You go, wait, he just threw a six-yard hitch route into a cover two corner, right? Those are things where you go, wait, my quarterback's head might be spinning a little bit. But either way, resilient, bounce back, and hook'em horns, mother B. John Robinson came to play today, and you saw that. And, of course, if they get him going, that's how they want to play. They want to run the ball, run the ball, throw the ball to Bijan, yep. get you to creep up, throw a deep pass to Drake London or Kyle Pitts, and play that kind of football. And, you know, they showed that they were close to that today. Yeah, that was one of those plays late in the game, the pitch on fourth and inches, where I'm just like, I don't know if you'd do that. And just quarterback sneak. It seemed like they were like inches away. But yeah, they pitched it. And that's the confidence that they have in Bijan Robinson that he can make a play in space. 124 yards on the ground for him, uh, 48 through the air, and four catches for the Hook'em Horns rookie there. Um, oh, they're all lines, one of the best in football. We knew that last year. Lean on that. Lean on that. And then this guy gets comfortable making. I mean, some of the cuts he made today, there's there's not many guys in football that can run this at full speed, jam their leg in the ground, slash one way, jam the other leg in the ground, slash the other way. And then the way he catches the ball is so natural. Uh, but, you know, it, this was a fun game to watch. It was a little all over the place. Um, and the the defense of the Falcons, for the most part, too, you know, they controlled the game. They The Packers need Watson. They need. They do. They do. They want to run the ball. It looked like the Falcons were really loading the box, trying to stop that. And I feel like this would have been a Christian Watson game, uh, and a you know, and, and a game where he could have had some opportunities to make some big plays down the field. Fourth quarter for the Packers. You're going to look back on that. They yes, had the totally shut touchdown down. League. They go right. three and out. They go three and out, right. and then they go four and out, and the game's over. That's right. And then they, their defense couldn't get off the field against the Falcons, and, and that was really all she wrote. Right. We went into the fourth quarter with a 24 to 12 lead, an eight play 75 yard touchdown by Ritter. That was the fourth down call for the touchdown. Right for Ritter. There was that a fourth down run. Yeah, on Ritter. It right. Was. It was right. Yeah. Then they come back, get the ball at midfield and go on a long kind of field goal drive. And then, like you said, you kind of wrapped up the the end. But, you know, some creative play design by the Falcons, the flea flicker that they threw it up to Drake London at one point that I think put them in field goal position there late in the game. Um, that's a good start. Hopefully that can give Desmond Ritter some confidence because yeah. they need him to get going. Well, they're going to be real fun to watch if he can get going. And the question from Ice Tray Buckets to you is, what do you think the Falcons' ceiling is? Ritter, game-winning drive, exclamation point. That's the question. Like, what are the steps that he makes? You're already high on him. You have him winning the division. Yeah. I like the Falcons. He's the piece, right? He's the piece that I don't know about. Mm. Uh, I know the guy is capable of leading the team and doing that. But when I watched the game last week on film – there's he doesn't trust his arm and his accuracy still yet. Like he's a little off right now. Like there's throws where I'd go, man, he checked it down and like you you could have thrown that to Drake London right there. You could you gotta you gotta throw that in there. He's open, right? Put it on this shoulder, whatever. Let's go, first down. And I felt like that today. There was even some plays where you know, I looked at and just got I I, I don't know if he feels confident in his placement of the football right now. And you can even see on some of the throws, the ball wobbled a little bit and all that. So, you know, he might just be – he's getting comfortable. He's trying to get comfortable here. And if they can get him comfortable, the Falcons are going to be a handful. We know that. There's, there's some things there, again, like we always say, nobody's going to out – class them up front on either side of the ball and that's going to give them a chance against anybody they're 2-0 and for the first time since 2017 and wow. that is also the last time they made the playoffs with the old feeble met ryan is yeah that, that he guy? wasn't feeble then <laughs> i know he was, just, yeah he was on his way to being dare feeble. you call ryan Tannehill feeble <laughs> he, it motivated him this week yeah, yeah i'm sure we're like, i'm in for reed uh the buccaneers are 2-0 and baker mayfield not feeble they beat the Bears 27-17. Your headline for this game is? Arr, it's the Pirates' life for me. They're pillaging teams and stealing games away. And they're stealing the ball from Kirk Cousins. And they're stealing the ball from a Justin Fields. Which I'm okay with both of those, you know, as <laughs> uh, opponents for the Lions in the NFC North. So, yeah, what do you make What do you make of this one? We, we, let's start with a comment here from Modern J. Okay. Thoughts on Baker and the Bucks' offense? I know the Bears have a below-average defense, they but do. I still feel impressed with what I saw today. You should. I mean, come on. I mean, those are big plays, right? Baker, 
He's got an edge and a pizzazz about him, and he's aggressive, and that fits Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. I mean, they made a lot of big plays in the passing game today, right? They, they, they had a chance to not make this game so close, really. Uh, you know, blew some opportunities when they kind of kind of kind of put the Bears away a little earlier, but I think all of it was good today. There was a little semblance in the run game, some mm-hmm. explosive plays in the pass game, and like we saw for the second week in a row, their defense could be a pain in the butt. There's some players, and of course, Todd Bowles is creative. So I, I liked everything I saw from them in that aspect today. Uh, but Mike Evans, you know, some of those plays and just the throws by Baker, yeah, they were the difference in the game. And then, yeah, you, uh, you know, our guy here is not wrong in saying, you know, my, at Modern J that the Bears defense was, you know, one of the things I was saying. I don't mind their scheme. Mm-hmm. I just say to everybody, like I was saying in the viewing room, who's the guy on the Bears that's going to stop anything? Who Who is it? I mean, Terrell Edmonds is good in the middle. Okay. You know, I like some of their younger guys. We, we've hit on that. But I just don't think there's enough playmakers on that side of the ball for them, for us to sit here and think, oh, they're going to, you know, be a force consistently all year long. I don't see that. Yeah, I, it's it's interesting with the Bears right now because they're 0-2. Yeah. They haven't looked great. No, they Justin have Justin Fields, that late interception on the screen pass, that's not fun no. to have on your highlight reel. No. Um, a team that a lot of people thought were going to make a step forward this year, two weeks in, I don't know. It's not looking I, like it. I, I feel like everybody wanted to step forward just because they went, wait, Jalen Hurts did it last year, so Justin Fields will do it this year. And because they can both run and uh, – the development in the fantasy world just all wanted that. And there, there, there's there's two differences here, okay? One, the Eagles have an all-star team. So th- that was Jalen Hurts doesn't have to be the guy. Justin Fields does not have that. He's got to be the guy a little bit. and A lot bit. A lot bit, exactly right. And you know, too, to that point where – yeah, he's just not at a point in his career yet where he's going to carry the team with his right arm and decision making and throws and everything like that. And and then of course he's being harassed by a, a pretty good defensive line by the Bucks that was around him. Yeah, he and only s- ran the ball four times for three yards. Well, some of it's on him too. You know, even watching back last week, some of the sacks and things he does, yeah. it's just like you got to get rid of the ball. Or this guy's open, and like we were talking about with Desmond Ritter, you got to have confidence that, yeah, it's a tight window, but you got to throw it in there. It's open in the NFL. And that's still the thing I've yet to see. There's still some throws where you go, ooh, I like that. And you saw DJ Moore again. But they have more talent to be had at the receiver position than some of these guys. And they're not being able to utilize all of it right now, whether that's the offense or Justin Fields. I don't know exactly, but it feels like it's a little bit the offense is careful because they don't trust Justin Fields, like I said last week. Not trying to you know, be a jerk. That would just be my honest assessment of the way things look right now. Bears have now lost 12 straight games. That dates back to last season. That extends their franchise record. Uh, they're 0-2 to start the year. The Buccaneers are 2-0. and The Commanders, Matthew Barry's Commanders are 2-0. and Crazy back-and-forth game between the Crazy. Broncos. The Crazy. Hail Mary, the prayers answered for Russell Wilson at the end. They cannot convert the two-point conversion. Could have been pass interference. I, I would agree. I, I, mean, I, I mean, I think if it's in the first... 55 minutes of the game, it's pass interference every time. In the middle of the field, maybe right. something Anywhere. like that. Anywhere. Yeah. But it was like a big moment, and they're just, they, the, the, everybody gets scared to grab it. They go, We already gave you the Hail Mary, right? Yeah. Even though there was nothing wrong with that. I, but I mean, but yeah. I, you got I, lucky on that one. I, right I mean, if that was the first quarter, that was definitely pass interference, right? They throw the flag, and it's going to be first and goal and whatever else. I was a little surprised. We were kind of in the middle of football night in America. Sure. But I'm watching. You know me. I'm keeping eyes just like I do on the podcast here. I don't care if we're on live TV or not. I'm <laughs> <laughs> peeking out of the corner of my eye. And I saw it, and I thought, oh, well, they call P.I. They're going to get another play. And then I went back to TV, and I looked, and I saw everybody shaking hands, and I went, wait, they didn't call anything? So I was a little surprised by that. But the headline. Oh, that's right. That's how I forgot this, this is This is Hyundai. <laughs> that's right. Okay, give me the headlines, Sorry Ahmed. That. Jeez. Oops. Sorry about that. Damn, Hyundai, give me Ahmed's money. Yeah, yeah, I will donate it for this uh, <laughs> podcast. To your, headline, your headline for this game is? How... <sighs> <laughs> Howly cow! <laughs> yeah, this one. Yeah, I'm not Go taking ahead. You credit for this. You want to throw it? Howly cow! Howly cow! 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was almonds, everybody. That was, that that was, was almonds, mine. okay? It delivered better. It would have made more sense, maybe, but I feel like now we've ruined it. Uh, Sam Howell, yeah. 299 yards, two touchdowns, made some big-time throws in this game. Yes, he did. Let's give them some credit because they did win this game ultimately. Hey, here's another game that had a turning point to me mm. where one team was totally controlling the game. It was 21 to 3, and the Broncos were driving. Russell Wilson got a little pressure and he ran to his left. And I'm not even sure he had to run to his left. And if he just would have stood there, he's going to hit a 20 yard in cut wide open over the middle of the field. But okay, he runs. So what? I know the game's not perfect. I'm not trying to overanalyze there. He runs to the left, and Davis hits him as he's kind of going, and he fumbles. Washington gets the ball, short field. They go down and score a touchdown, uh, get a two-point conversion because there was an unnecessary roughness hit on Logan Thomas as he caught the touchdown. Mm -hmm. So they go for two, make it 21-11. They stop the Broncos, I want to say, three and out, and then go get a field goal before the half. So here was a half where the Broncos were dominating. They were the better team on the field. And they went into the half at 21-14, and they could have very, in a real way, got in – up 24-3, maybe 28-3, 28-10. You know, I mean, they had an yeah. opportunity here to really put Washington in a very tough spot. Yeah, with about five minutes to go in the first half, it was 21-3. And then five minutes into the second half, it was tied at 21. It, and, and that's where it got into what you just talked about. That's where they're, they're, they're dangerous there. And holy cow, mm -hmm. he doesn't give a damn. Yeah. He keeps firing. CJ Easterday, damn okay. Sam Howell clawing the commander's back from a 21-3 deficit. Do you think he's shown enough to inspire real confidence that he could be the long-term solution at quarterback? By the way, love the late night pods. Thanks, man. Thanks, we CJ. appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, yes, I I mean I think he's he's done enough right now through two weeks. Yeah. Where the team's gonna see the potential and go, hey, we, we might got something here. Right? I don't want to say we're definitely writing in stone. He's the starting quarterback for the next 10 years, right? They spread the ball around exactly. in this one. Yes, they Leading did. Leading receiver was Terry McLaurin with 54 yards, but then Bates had 46, Gibson out of the backfield 44, Robinson out of the backfield 42. Your guy Diami Brown had 25, Dotson had a few catches for 22 yards. Explosive plays, too, you know, and doing it. You know, I mean, just just in that, some of those guys you just said there. I mean, we have one, two, three, four, five, six of them who had a reception of 15 yards or more. That's true, right? Yeah. So that kind of just tells you, and that's I think the Eric Bieniemy effect of that offense and being the OC, and then they got some talent at receiver to what you're talking about, and he ain't gun shy. How howly cow? Mm -hmm. Okay, he will. He like his touchdown pass to McLaurin down the middle. I don't even think he was supposed to throw that. It was a single safety defense, and he threw a deep post. But here's what he did a good job of. He really kept his eyes to the left and kind of kept the safety over there. And I don't, you know, either he's got some guts or – he just doesn't give a shit, and he's going to throw it in there. He stood in there. He said, I'm going to throw this ball down the middle, and it was a tight throw, and McCorn went up and got it, and it was a touchdown, and he got it going. And then and then the Brian Robinson started making plays in the run game in the second half. We saw Gibson make a, a few plays in the pass game yep. in the run game, and they kind of got a little mojo going, and the Broncos lost their way on the offensive side of the ball in the second half. I'm feeling pretty good. My playoff picks are looking like Cowboys, my Super Bowl pick yeah, I'm feeling good it's about. It's all about you. Commanders, yeah. my playoff pick I'm feeling pretty good about. They, they, got, they got some playoff potential. There's no doubt about that. My you Giants know. to not make the playoffs, I'm feeling okay about that one right Denver's now. Gonna, you know, Denver's going to feel sick. They are. Um, They've lost nine straight games now in which they have led at halftime. That's an NFL record. They find ways, Sean Payton, Nathaniel Hackett, whatever, they're finding ways to beat themselves a little here. And like the fumble we talked about with Russell Wilson, the interception he throws, that was bad too. You know, Russell played pretty good. They made some big plays in the past game. It was the positives was Marvin Mims, who I think could be Terry McLaurin 2.0 on the other side of the ball, mm. right? A mid-round pick that can fly, but was on a kind of a college offense last year in Oklahoma that didn't really know how to feed the ball, and they weren't very good last year, so he didn't get to like kind of show everything he has. But, I mean, two catches for 113 yards, that kind of shows you how explosive he is. 
But Russell did do some good things. But yeah, to throw the interception uh, to Forbes, it was an out route to the left side. And man, I, I don't know what happened there, but I mean, he threw it right into Forbes' chest. And uh, that was kind of a, a big moment in the football game too because I do think if I m- memory serves me uh, correct there, that led to at least a field goal by um, the Washington uh, on that series. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Missed field goal. Oh, that was the missed field goal. Okay, okay. But, yeah, okay. Either way, Memory turnover. betrayed you. It betrayed you. Damn it. How it dare it betray at me at 11.45 p.m. on a Sunday night? I've only been up since 5 o'clock this morning. No problem. Congrats to Ron Rivera. 100th win as an NFL head coach. Eighth active head coach with 100 or more Two and wins. 0. That is Give Me the Headlines presented by Hyundai. One more game to Howly talk about cow. on this Sunday. Just had to say it one more time. Two quarterbacks. So good by you. Two rookie quarterbacks. <laughs> I'm moving on. Uh, Colts <laughs> defeat the Texans 31-20. to What a bummer. Anthony Richardson oh, goes out with a concussion after right? making some dynamic plays early in this game. Gardner Minshew comes in, gene shorts and all, and uh, is one of the best backup quarterbacks, I would say, in the league. He right? is. He is. 100%. You know, I mean, it, it was disappointing. That's the thing. You said it, right? Disappointing. We wanted so, to see both those C.J. Stroud versus Richardson all game long. Right. And we saw Richardson last week. I, I mean, we got the preseason game number three, and I went, man, Richardson's really raw. We're going to have some tough spots here. Mm-hmm. Shane Steichen's a hell of a coach. He really is. And I think we're seeing that, one, because the Colts offense looks really good and the Eagles offense Ooh. doesn't look as Ooh. good, right? Okay. I think that's the Shane Steichen effect. Yeah. It's, okay. it's fair to say that. He's a damn good coach. He really is. I think he's one of the best offensive minds in football. But, yeah, Richardson was throwing the ball with great control early on and, of course, you know, had the big run. I think there was two big runs, if I remember correctly, before he got hurt. Um, Mm -hmm. But, but yeah, it just, you know, in the end zone. And this is just where, hey, this sport's crazy and it's violent. And I don't care how big and strong you are. It's just, you know, he came down hard in the end zone. The back of his head smashed into that AstroTurf, right, where I would like to say grass grass would have been softer on his head. Um, But he comes out of the football game, and that's where they were lucky to have Gardner Minshew. But, yeah, they played better than the Texans today, and we know that. I would like to say, though, C.J. Stroud, for the second week in a row, played really well. They are not crazy explosive they can't run the ball right now their old line's got some issues second week in a row they're asking their rookie quarterback to throw the ball 40 plus times in a football game 47 times right 384 yards two touchdowns and was under pressure a lot just like last week i really like the way cj stroud looks he's never going to be anthony richardson and that freaky guy sure but cj stroud If this continues to go and they can build around him and you give him time, he is a pinpoint thrower of the football, and he is a good decision maker too. So I'd be encouraged by that aspect with Houston. I do think they got to be a little careful with how much he's getting hit and people are around him and how much they're putting on his shoulders. Yeah. What, how many sacks did the, the Colts get Counting today? Them right now. Okay, One, yeah. two, three, four, five, six. I mean, there was a few where – Early on in the game, I mean, producer Matt Casey and all of us, we were looking and we were just going, holy crap. I mean, they were on them and like this. So the, 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 that's where they just got to be careful that way. But uh, encouraged by both, and hopefully Anthony Richardson's okay to where he can come yes, back and kick agreed. some ass again. And I need to apologize to Nico Collins, who last week I said he was probably a number three receiver on other teams out there. He made some plays today, right? 146 yards through the air. And a he's, he's big and strong. That's where he really is. And he's got a little bit of a deceptive speed. But, you know, he can play through contact. He can catch balls and break arm tackles. And, like, he's fearless like a Jim Harbaugh Michigan receiver would be, right? Mm -hmm. Where he just, like, you want to throw it over the middle and try to, you know – Take a shot on me? Go ahead. Try, right? He's, he's, he's got a little physicality to him that is different than most receivers. Yeah. And uh, I think that's, it, it is encouraging there. Again, I don't know if he's a bona fide number one, but he's a number one for them, and he's doing some good things here early on in the season. I don't even know why I would say that about a Michigan receiver. I don't I, even it's know like you I forgot. That. You had a brain slippage yeah, that was there. Bad. I mean, damn, it's so weird for you to be that late negative late on somebody. Jeez. How, a holy Wolverine, cow. A Wolverine like that? <laughs> uh, okay, I'll give you a. Uh, I'll give you three comments on the Eagles win against the Vikings on Thursday night. What do you want to say about that? It just an unimpressive win mm. right, for Eagles standards, right? I mean, that game was there to be had. The Vikings outplayed the Eagles. I mean, it was just 
How many times did they fumble in the game? 47? I mean, what, what do you I mean? I mean, really, they just they shot themselves in the foot. Brian Flores had an unbelievable game plan. And like I said, breaking that game down last week, what worried me was just that the Vikings are not big enough and deep enough up front quite yet to hang in there too long. And you turn the ball over there. I mean, the Eagles w- 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 run left, run right, run left, run right, run left run right but you could see they're not in sync right now especially in the passing game and aj brown was pissed off and everything like that running right running left running right running left (laughs) i'm gonna run my ass i'm gonna run my (laughs) mouth on the sideline that's what he's doing and that's what a receiver does but uh, you know I'm, i'm certainly not giving up on the eagles or anything like that but for the talent they have they've been i if it wasn't for turnovers in both game i'd go they've been outplayed But maybe that's the type of team they're going to be all year, that their defense and stuff is so good, they're just going to constantly get turnovers, and and maybe that's just who they are. We'll see as we go forward here. Monday Night Football, two games. Get your clicker ready. Damn. Get clicking back and forth. Click, 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 click. I'm going to have one on the computer and then one on the TV. That's how I'm going to do it. You're not going to incorporate the clicker at all. I can't. i got to see them both all the time. I just can't do that, though. How are you going to watch both games at one time? Well, I, I, watch, I watch seven. Oh, YouTube TV, Matt Casey says oh, on YouTube, YouTube TV. Oh, YouTube TV can split it split like screen. that? Yeah, mm. that's true. I don't know if I like that, though, but I might try that. That's interesting. Mm. I usually do one game on the TV and then one game on my laptop. So and that I way just, you have the big screen, and then since the laptop is close to you, it's almost like it's a big screen, Exactly too. right. I, I get that. So that's where I'm going. I'm excited for it. Okay, who's going to be on the TV, Saints at Panthers or Browns at Steelers? I think Browns or Steelers are going to get top billing on okay. the TV. And then Saints at Panthers relegated to the laptop. They're relegated to the laptop, right. Okay. They are. This one right here. Actually, my wife's got a nicer one. My wife's got a nicer everything than me. So, <laughs> yes, I probably will watch on hers. So. Uh, and what, what do you think? What do you think about that? Um, Both those games. <sighs> The steel, I, you know, the, the the I think the Saints are the better football team against the Panthers. Yeah. I do. I don't have faith in the Panthers' offense quite yet. I think they're still figuring it out, and I think that Saints' defense is pretty good. And we know, like we saw last week, the other side of the story is going to be the Panthers' defense versus that Saints' offense. That's going to be a little bit of the clash of the titans there. But I, I think the Saints are going to win kind of a ugly game on the road I, I can't remember the score i picked but i wanted to say it was like 20 to 10 maybe 24 14 something like that and then browns and steelers um yeah i'm a little concerned for the steelers mm. yeah as much as i was feeling so good about them mm-hmm. the injury to cam hayward and the injury to deontay johnson and then of course the way the browns looked in week one those are scary things the browns ran can run the ball and now you have no cam hayward I got to think Deshaun Watson will be another game of feeling a little more comfortable. And then, you know, to not have Deontay Johnson, and again, their O-line didn't look great last week, and we saw the Browns D-line looked real, right? I mean, the Browns D-line was awesome against the Bengals last week. So that's where I worry about it, and I'm taking the Browns to beat the Steelers on the road. Uh, Amari Cooper, is he is He, he, he up? tweaked his groin, right, at Friday practice or something like that. I, I, I remember. He's I was, questionable. He's questionable. Unlikely to play. Ooh, okay. All right, so that you know that helps the Steelers out a little bit. I do. I'm starting to get the feeling like maybe we slept on the Browns a little bit. Yeah, yeah. It, they were definitely like, I think we saw the talent. We said, hey, I mean, but but I I had to see it to believe it mm-hmm. first. And you know, the, the week one was definitely a step in believing. All right, so those are the two games: one game on a laptop, another on a big screen TV, or with Matt Casey's household, both on the big screen TV, split screen style. <laughs> that is every game. The bonus live reaction to yeah, Cole Strange. That's right. Being short of the first, don't the mess line with my game. eyes. You wear glasses. I don't. <laughs> I know that's a good point. My eyes are better than yours. Well, someone who wears glasses though already is admitting there's some sort of deficiency there, right. and so maybe the glasses need to be updated. Maybe the, they do. The You're yeah. right. Maybe you need to go back and get a new lens in there or something. Because <laughs> I was all over it. They go, why? Do, why did you come in here? I was like that Cole Strange play. I thought it was and the first it, time. It is like, disappointing you did? that my producer in the podcast, our producer Pete, yeah. he, was, he was he was watching the game instead of producing we, the podcast. Yeah, we were Damn. all watching the game and we forgot <laughs> we know. were doing a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why we're doing it Sunday yeah. night during a game, so right. you get live reaction and then reaction to every single game. We fulfilled the promise to the homies, I feel like. I, I, I hope I hope the, the homies are happy. I'm happy. This was fun. I'm having fun doing this. Yeah. I am really f- 
tired. I will say that. Okay, <laughs> on the way out. Yeah. Uh, but it was. It, it was. It's awesome. We're gonna keep doing this. We'll see if we can make it the whole season. Blow off Florida after a while. You if know, I end up in the hospital at the end of the year, then you know what happened. <laughs> Chris just got worn out. It kind of almost deprived. happens every year, right? You always got your back or your hips or something like that. I know. So it probably will happen. Yeah. But. Thanks, man. You're just full of good news today. <laughs> Holy crap! Just, I'm just setting <laughs> you expectations. You probably will hurt your back or your hip this year. You're yeah. right. As long as you expect it, it will Thank be. Thank you. Less I'm devastating. glad you're a Lions lost. Okay. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> All right, everybody. You know where to find us. Subscribe, rate, review. Wednesday, week two film review. You know, like what we like to call it, what the F happened. Yeah, All right. We'll be here Wednesday to do that. Ahmed Farid, Chris Sims, everybody. Pete Demolitis, good job. Gabby. Morgan, Gabby, Matt Casey, who's sitting here and doesn't need to, but he's being a good team player. Yep. Way to go. You the man. We did it. You know where to find us. Keep shooting us questions on, on social media, Instagram, Twitter, wherever. Hope everybody enjoys Enjoys the double session of Monday Night Football. Be good. See you Wednesday. Peace out. Clap, Clap it, it up. up. Let's go. Yo, yo. Thanks for watching, homies. I appreciate it. As always, the NFL season is right around the corner. So now it's your turn to hit subscribe to Chris Sims on Button. If you want to get all the training camp battles, preseason film review, playoff predictions, and much, much more, you know where to find it. It's right here. Chris Sims on Button. Please subscribe. Thanks again for watching. Peace out, homies. See you soon.